Welcome to Plane Maker tutorial number 30 and Blender part 16. We're in the process of animating this gear lever here and uh, we were just about to assign a data ref to this handle here. Now what is a data ref? Okay, let me go to the X-Plane folder and open up the folder that contains the X-Plane to Blender plugin that I downloaded a while back. Now besides these install scripts that we have here for Mac and PC, we have data refs text and we also have explain to blender html this is sort of an instruction manual on how to use explain to blender and i'm using a lot of the stuff that i learned from reading this to share with you in these tutorials now in this text file there are links to internet based data ref reference files so this website you can also take note of it up here it's on xsquawkbox.net and you can also look for it on google data refs for explain that'll bring up the same page you have all these different data refs ordered in such a way that you can have a quick overview of it and read about its description. Now one handy trick is to say Command F on the Mac or Control F on the PC and you can, for example, if you're looking for the data ref for thrust vectoring, you can go thrust, reverse thrust. You have 41 matches here so you can narrow down your search and here it's already 10 matches. So this is an easy way to find the data refs that you're looking for for your animation. Let's go back to Blender. Just let me demonstrate this for you how it works. I have to go to the scripts window now and activate the script included with the Xplain to Blender script package and it's called Xplain Animation and it's found under Object. So with this object selected and parented to this bone, we will now select this Xplain Animation script and we will get the option of assigning a data ref to it and that will determine what function in Xplain the movement of this handle will depend upon. Okay, so what we're looking for is gear retract. So let's go here. For now, I'm going to go by memory and see where, if I can find the actuator for the landing gear. So let's go to aircraft. Oh, look, here's gear. And then ACF gear retract. Right here it is. Basically, what this is telling me is that when this handle is in position of frame number one, then I want this data ref to be equal to zero and when the same lever is in the position of frame number two then I want this data ref to be equal to one. Now this is assuming you know what the values for zero and one are. Now I'm thinking that probably the value for zero is going to be gear extended and the value for one is going to be gear retracted. If not it's going to be the opposite way around. Sometimes you're going to have to explore a little bit and experiment with it and this is probably what's going to be most time consuming about making these animations in Blender. But let's say now that this is what we want. We can always just try it out and see what happens. So let's hit apply and now since we're in the scripts window we also have the option of using the export script from this particular location. So after I've saved this Blender file, I'm going to export it, open up X-Plane, switch to 3D Cockpit View, and look, there we have our lever, our landing gear lever. So what we can see from this is that, in fact, the texture is working, and most likely, if we were to compare it to the 2D cockpit, we would, in fact, see that the landing gear is being retracted. We can test this theory by accelerating and getting up into the air because I think that the plane only allows for retracts once it's in the air. So let's try that. Let's try getting this thing up in the air. And once we're quite obviously airborne, we switch back to 3D cockpit view and try to retract the landing gear. See if that works. Yes, it does work. We see that this switch is at least textured in such a way that clicking on it will perform the desired function. Now, the gear retract lever is not animated properly. So this could be due to a number of factors, including that we chose the wrong data ref for this particular animation. So we have to kind of go back to the drawing board and try to find the right data ref that will actually end up moving this lever. So you see, it's kind of a complex matter to get all the cockpit objects to perform the way you want them to. So let's go back to Blender and let's go back to the script. Go to Object, Explain Animation. And let's see if we can find something under cockpit and switches. I found a candidate that looks actually very promising. It's called gear handle status. Let's try that one and let's just apply it and save and explain it. Go back to explain, load it up again. And I'm really curious now to see whether the handle will move. And yes, it does move. It moves opposite of what we want it to, but at least we see that it moves. 
To fix the opposite thing, notice that if the handle is up here, you see it's down in the 2D cockpit, and if it's down here, it's up in the 2D cockpit. But we can fix that. Let's go back to Blender, and we can fix it in one of two ways. Either we inverse the animation here, so we assign whatever was down in frame 1 to up in frame 1, and then we hit the I key to insert a rotational keyframe, and then we go to frame 2, go down, by 60 degrees and insert another keyframe. That's one option, or we select the object again that has the script attached to it, and we edit this script. We say instead of frame 1 corresponding to 0 and frame 2 corresponding to 1, we want it to be the other way around. We can have frame 1 correspond to 1 and frame 2 correspond to 0. But now that I've already done it the other way, uh, that would be a redundant thing to do, so I'm going to go ahead and cancel that. Again, let's save this export it, reload the plane, go to 3D cockpit mode, and here we already see something promising. We see that the gear lever is down, whereas in the 2D cockpit it was also down. Now if we click on it, it goes up. All right, now notice also the animated texture that we have on here. This is something that we can tweak in Photoshop, just the way I showed you how we tweaked this one here in Photoshop, and we can use different texturing techniques to actually make this look cool. Like we could, for example, use the animated textures and take advantage of the fact that it has two animation detents to program something like shading into it so that the lever in its up position will have a different shade than if it's in the down position to reflect sort of the lighting conditions inside the cockpit. We could do all sorts of stuff. Okay, I hope this was clear and interesting enough to follow along. Now that you know how to do this, the sky's the limit in terms of what you could animate inside the cockpit. So thanks for watching. Please rate this video, and I hope you stick around for the next couple of videos. And if you haven't done so yet, please sign up, and I'll see you around for the next couple of steps in this journey.